All right, I apologize for the delay. The time is 7.37. I will call this regular business and public hearing of the mayor and council to order. Today is Monday, August 11, 2014. Uh, Councilman Witts is not present tonight. For the invocation, um, we have Councilman Krause who has agreed to lead us in tonight's invocation. God of power and might, wisdom and justice. Through you, authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment is decreed. Assist us with your spirit of counsel and fortitude. May we always seek the ways of righteousness, justice, and mercy. Grant that we may be enabled by your powerful protection to lead Snellville with honesty and integrity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, now for tonight's announcements. On August 12th, we will have a Board of Appeals meeting, a 7 p.m. work session, and a 7.30 p.m. meeting here at City Hall. August 18th will be a meeting of our Public Arts Commission. It will occur at City Hall in the conference room at 6.30 p.m. August 24th, you can watch a rebroadcast of this council meeting on Comcast Channel 25 at 6.30 p.m. Our next regular scheduled council meeting will be on August 25th. As always, we'll have a 6.30 p.m. work session in the conference room and a 7.30 p.m. meeting here in council chambers. Our planning commission will meet on August 26th at 7 o'clock p.m. here in City Hall with a, for a work session and a 7.30 p.m. meeting. September 1st, City Hall and all city offices, with the exception of emergency services and garbage pickup, um, will be closed for the Labor Day holiday. Now for the Pledge of the Flag, we have Allen with Boy Scout Troop 593. If you'll come forward and lead us in tonight's pledge. Raise the flag. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under ceremonial matters, I was asked to do a proclamation in recognition of Chefs Against Cancer and Chef Appreciation Day. This is Proclamation 2014-07. Whereas the National Pink Tie Organization bands men of all professions together to support the fight against cancer by encouraging men to wear pink or fuchsia tie to raise awareness, educate, and empower the community about cancer. Whereas a division of the National Pink Tie Organization is Chefs Against Cancer, which involves over 400 chefs worldwide. Whereas the NPTO has established few things that are better for both body and, my, and soul than a well-crafted, sublimely prepared, and lovingly pre presented meal. Whereas August is Cancer Awareness Month and is part of the, its Cancer Awareness Month activities, the National Pink Tie Organization celebrates Chef Appreciation Day each year. Whereas Chef Appreciation Day is held every third Saturday in August and is a time when chefs, physicians, nutritionists, and fitness professionals throughout the nation and the city of Snellville gather to promote healthy living and cooking, to uplift one another, and to give back to those who have already helped so many others realize how truly wonderful a happy and healthy life can taste. Whereas the citizens of Snellville always support the fight against cancer and I have a history of honoring the survivors and remembering those who have lost their battle with cancer. Now, therefore, I, Kelly D. Couts, Mayor of the City of Snellville, where everybody is somebody, on behalf of the city, do hereby proclaim Saturday, August 16, 2014, as Chef Appreciation Day in the City of Snellville. So proclaim this 11th day of August, 2014. And I don't believe anybody's here tonight to accept that, so I'll give it to Ms. Richardson to send to them. We also have, some of you may have seen on our city website and on the Snellville Art Commission website, we had a writing contest. It was a ghost writing contest because this Halloween, the Art Commission is going to put together um, a cemetery tour. It's going to be fictional and it's going to involve stories in the cemetery. 
I had the honor of judging the entries, and we have some very creative writers here in the city of Snellville, and tonight we'd like to introduce the winners. Um, so first we have third place, we have Ms. Marlene Buchanan. Is Ms. Buchanan here? Did I see her? Would you like to come forward and accept your certificate? Um, it was just, it's my understanding, and Kurt can elaborate in his reports, it was just a tidbit of the story. They're going to develop it more for the actual ghost tour. Because the submission had to be 500 words or less, so it was just a, it was just a tease of what was to come. We now have our minutes. We discussed in the work session postponing the minutes. Do I have a motion to postpone the minutes until the next council meeting? Motion to postpone approval of minutes till our next council meeting. In That's August 25th. August 25th, I believe. There's a motion by Councilman Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Emanuel. All those in favor of the motion signify raising your right hand. That's five in favor. All those opposed, you're opposed. The motion stands approved. We have no invited guests tonight. That brings us to our committee and department reports. And we have Kirk Bice, who is the chairman of our Snellville Public Arts Commission. Mr. Bice. Thank you. We're uh, first going to talk about the labyrinth. And uh, this is Judy Level's brainchild. <laughs> um, I'm pleased to announce that we have spoken with Mr. Sanders, and we have a spot actually between the memorial and the cemetery that we think would be a very good place for the labyrinth. We have measured off a space. B.B. Gibson, who has built labyrinths before, it has put together what materials would be needed. We understand some of them may be some surplus materials from, from the city. And uh, we hope to get started on it in the fall. And a little bit more about uh, our ghost tour. It's actually not going to be in the cemetery. It's going to be around City Hall. Uh, we've got a couple sponsors that we would like to thank, Cheapo's Thrift and a, an online uh, playingwithmurder.com who gave some uh, gift certificates uh, to the winners. The, all of the judges uh, were Brian Arrington, Gene Baldwin, Kelly Couts, Judy Level, and myself. And auditions for anybody interested in participating are coming up on August 27th, uh, the evening from 6.30 to 8, and August 30th, uh, Saturday morning from 10 to 12. We're also planning this, uh, this fall again to do our Christmas Carol fundraising show, and that will, uh, those auditions will be in September, and the uh, production will be uh, the first week of December, December 7th. And we're going to talk a little bit about the mural that we're planning a little bit later on when you guys take it up. So we've got a lot of good things going on with the uh, Public Arts Commission and hope uh, everybody can make it to our meeting next Monday night. Thank you. Thank you, Kirk. Mr. Sanders, do you have anything to add to your, mayor, to your uh, city manager's report? No, I don't. I think we covered it in the work session. Thank you. Thank you. We have new consent agenda. Now for old business, we have our public hearing. Actually, Mr. Bice, I shouldn't have let you sit down. 
Um, the first thing on our public hearing is second reading on CUP 14-03, consideration action on application by the Snellville Arts Commission and the City of Snellville for conditional use permit to paint a mural um, on the concrete wall at 2600 block of Main Street West. Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, this is just a continuation from our June 9th, uh, 2014 second reading where we postponed until they had a more definitive design. Uh, Mr. Bice has uh, made us aware that he's ready to present that and then uh, have action taken. So I'll turn it over to him at this time. And so, Mr. Bice, this is on a, for a public hearing as a CUP, so I'm going to treat you as the applicant. So if you'd like to explain the Thank project you. to us. I would like to apply for a permit to, uh, uh, to paint a mural along the uh, border of by 78. And this is, uh, this is by right in front of New London Plaza between McDonald's and the tire uh, place, which right now is quite simply a blank wall. It's uh, 42 inches high. And what we would like to do, paint on it, you can see two examples here, is the stone wall behind it with things uh, representing kind of a vibrant uh, small city in front of it. Uh, you can see things like two children there. They've, that's actually a, a cart full of puppies that they've got. You can see the bottom of a, a jogger up there. And then we've also got some things like somebody sitting there and a bicyclist and as many things as we can think of so that when people are sitting there at the traffic light, they can you know, be perhaps a little bit entertained by this. This is not going to be a, a, uh, a traffic stopper. You know, we don't want to cause any accidents or anything like that, but it's going to make it a little bit more artistic, a little bit more, well, a lot more interesting than what is up there right now. And so this is what we are asking you all to uh, approve so that we can get started when the weather cools off just a little bit. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Bice? Um, I have a question, either Mr. Thompson or Mr. Sanders. Do we know if this location, is it going to be affected by the CFI at all? Not the, uh, not the wall. We have the permit from, uh, from GDOT, and uh, um, we'll, be, we'll be in good shape. Thank you. Um, now, this is on for public hearing, so I have to open it up for public comment. If anyone would like to speak for or against this application, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Ferris, 1749 Ridgefield Drive. Um, I'm all for painting the wall. I just have a question. We're only going to put the bottom half of these pictures on? I doubt that. Okay, so you're not going to be, you're not, oh good, so you can use me. <laughs> you're not going to cut off heads. Well, no, I think that's possible. I, that, you know, you see this, and I, I don't think we want to get into real, you know, we don't want Marcy's face up there, but it's really right. face. But I don't, I don't think we're going to do that. I think it's more artistic than. I think it's a great idea to paint the wall. I really do. Um, Lilburn has that painting downtown, and it is gorgeous. And I think it'll really help the uh, looks on 78. Thank you, Mr. Fer Mrs. Ferris. Any other um, comments, either for or against this application? See none, I'll close the public hearing portion of this uh, agenda item and ask for a motion by council. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve CUP 14-03 with this condition. The murals shall be designed and painted 
in general accordance with the submitted sample board, including exhibits and sample photos, with modifications to meet the Georgia Department of Transportation requirements. Substantial variation from the sample board, as determined by the city manager, will require mayor and council approval. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Emanuel. Any further discussion by the council? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. That's five in favor. All those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. That brings us to item B, second reading on RZ 14-02. Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Uh, once again, this is a continuation from our last meeting. Uh, we left with uh, trying to find a little more common ground. Uh, Mr. Wiss postponed it for another two weeks. The applicant has actually turned in a new plan that reduces the square footage of the building, increases the buffer. I'll allow him to make the presentation that we plan to just have this about 4 o'clock this afternoon, and I'll answer any questions that you guys may have. Thompson. We may have some after we hear from the applicant, Mr. Thompson. Is the applicant present? If you'll come, well, you don't have to, but if you'd like to present your site plan. Uh, my name is Guy Abernathy, 174 Dekeel Road, Dekeel, Georgia. Appreciate the opportunity to come back as, as we left off at the um, last meeting. Um, this red line that you see on here represents what we would perceive would be the normal um, building area that we could have uh, for our site uh, versus a non-residential property with the buffer in the back as we talked about before. line right there represents the 30 foot offset from the church property uh, and this drawing with the green line the only difference that you can see is in this area right here in order to make parking for this particular building we're going to get to that building in a second we're saying that the parking lot would be no closer than 25 feet to the church property um, <coughs> plan that we're submitting and this particular drawing does not have the landscaping on it just for clarity purposes but we are showing again this building is no closer than 30 feet and as you can see it skews away a little bit on this side but it's no closer in this back corner than 30 feet to the property and on this side the parking lot the face of the wall is at 25 feet in the parking lot on that side of that. Uh, we listened to uh, what uh, mayor and council were saying at the last meeting and went back and reconsidered our plan. We reduced the footprint of the building by 15% from 5,000 feet to 4,250 feet. Reduced the parking from uh, 20, we've been up to 22 spaces. We're down to 17 spaces, which still meets the code of the city ordinances. And um, we're, uh, we're submitting this as our plan that, that uh, we would like you guys to pass. We also uh, considered, I think, before we had a loop around and had some parking over here in this area, this is a little bit more straightforward, what you would typically see. It allowed us to come down the hill a little bit better and make a little bit wider parking area for people to manipulate in and out of there. So we feel like it's a good plan. Uh, it's something I met with a couple of council members about and talked about. We also I met with my uh, property owner who's agreed to what we're doing and we feel like this is uh, more than the compromise, <coughs> excuse me, that was even suggested at the last meeting. Uh, the one thing that we did note on this plan uh, was that uh, as a part of the rezoning, the developer would like to reserve the right to reduce the building size even further 
uh, and shift the building pad and parking as necessary within the box that we're talking about here to accommodate a drive-through if the need would, by an end user would arise. Uh, the, be a, the above request would be subject to the setback requirements and conditions set forth in this rezoning case and further by the requirements of the City of Snellville Development Ordinance. Um, and that's pretty much our presentation. Applicant. Actually, it's probably more for Jason at this point. Uh, just clarification on the drive-through request. So basically, Mr. Abernathy, what I'm hearing is the building could get smaller. Yes. Okay. And that's what you understand too as well, Jason? That's what I understand what he's asking for. Basically, if he shrinks the building to fit the drive-through in the allotted space as shown on this plan, that he'd be able to do it administratively through the planning department. Right. And uh, the city manager instead of having to come back. To okay, us. and that doesn't affect our setbacks or, I mean, he no, stays well much. within the guidelines. If you, yeah, if you approve this plan, he can still only have pavement and building where it's shown, okay. no matter what. Thank you. And Mr. Abernathy, yes, sir. refresh my memory. Last time we were at a 20-foot undisturbed, I mean, uh, excuse me, 20-foot enhanced landscape buffer. That's correct. And so now we're at a 10 foot undisturbed and then 15 foot enhanced landscape. Correct. Um, is there a difference between landscaped and enhanced landscape? Okay, no, just the same thing. Okay, just clarification. So we're Maybe now. you're planting, but. Okay. So we're now at a 25 foot total buffer, 10 undisturbed and 15 Correct. landscape. Okay. Any other questions for yes, Mr. Yes, but Abinette? it's actually 30 feet at the building. Yes, You've got a 20 feet. foot enhanced and a 10 foot undisturbed That's at the building. What is, there's a wall at the base of the parking area. How, how tall is that wall? The wall at the roadside would go to zero. It's going to be five feet high when you get down by the building. Okay. Additional questions for Mr. Abernathy? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I will open up the public hearing portion of this agenda item. Anyone that would like to speak for or against this uh, rezoning, uh, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. My name is Warren Auld. I live at 2814 Williams Place, Snellville, Georgia. Uh, I'm here representing Grace Baptist Church in their response to this application. I think what we have heard tonight confirms two things that the church has said over and over again. Uh, first of all, that the building proposed here is not the building that will be built. I don't think there's any question, should not be any question in anybody's mind. The last statement was made by the applicant uh, they're going to request to come back and make alterations. It will be a different building. It will not be what they're suggesting. It will not be what uh, was being presented here. The second point is just as clear, and that is the arguments made by the applicant up to this point have not been accurate. Our point is they could build a different building at the Planning Commission. At the last two meetings, they said they couldn't. Tonight, they come in and said they can't. It will be a different building. They can build a different building. That's what we're asking for. We're not asking that there be any variance offered or made or given to the church. We're not here asking that this city council act in any way to give this church anything. All we're asking is that the change in the variance being offered to this applicant be less so that it not be a, such a burden upon the church. You can build a business on this location. You can build and make money, but you cannot build this building because it is not zoned for this particular piece of property. As noted in the application, uh, the ordinance, there are six separate variances required in order to put the building proposed on this piece of property, six. There is a reduction of an undisturbed buffer in the rear. There's a reduction of a small segment of the undisturbed buffer in the rear again. There is a reduction of the buffer to the side that we're speaking to, a monument side variance, a variance of architectural requirements, a variance uh, for other architectural requirements. When you come to the city and you read the zoning ordinances, it is clear and it would be clear to the builder, to the applicant, to the owner, that the building they wanted to put in there could not be built. The question that has to be asked, 
is how many variances will you grant? What you're doing here very clearly is setting a precedent. And you need to be aware of that. The next zoning applicant who comes and asks for six, seven, eight variances, what will you say? We don't grant variances? No, because you've set this particular precedent here. The problem here, which, we, which I noted in the letter that I submitted to you at the very first meeting six weeks ago, was that there is no standard before you by which you make this determination. It is uh, a determination based upon a argument made by the applicant, but no standard by which this council is going to weigh that argument and make a decision. The Article 2 of the Buffer and Screening Regulations, Section 19, states two opportunities for a buffer to be, uh, or variance to have a, a buffer variance to be um, offered. One is by a director in an administrative variance. It offers two criteria. The other area in which um, buffer can be um, varied is in the zoning ordinances for the Zoning Board of Appeals. It has six criteria, but when you come to the city council, there is no criteria set forth. So when the property owner who is affected by this decision comes before you, there is no way in which we can make an argument to you. There is this whole issue has a constitutional infirmity. I ask you to understand how important that is to the owner of the property. The only thing that we can come and tell you is that the property that is next to the church is too small to build a building that's being asked for. We're asking you to recognize this. We're asking you to not turn your back on the citizens of Snellville. You want to see where Snellville is? Look at Snellville right here. The applicant sends his um, agent here makes a very good argument, puts up the paperwork that's on, on the screen, but the applicant himself is not here. The applicant himself was not at the planning commission. The applicant himself was not at the first meeting of the council, not at the second meeting of the council, not at the third meeting of the council. The applicant says he wants to be a part of Snellville, but he's not here. Snellville is here. We're asking you, don't turn your back on Snellville recognize that these particular ordinances, development regulations have been put in place for a reason, and that is for the citizens who are here to enjoy their property and to know that next door to them, a building is not going to be shoehorned in. I was asked about the 10-foot buffer. What difference does 10-foot make? Well, we now we have five feet. Well, 10 feet is about the distance between me and the council sitting. Without this 10 foot, with the 10 foot, you're sitting there, I'm standing here. Without the 10 foot, I'm sitting in your lap. 10 feet makes a difference. Five feet makes the difference. It is a difference that's important for the enjoyment of the property. We ask that you recognize this, that you recognize that we're not asking you to make a change. We're asking you to recognize that this church has been here. This church wants to enjoy its property. This church has come halfway and said, we were willing to give up 30 feet. That's all we're asking for, halfway. A 30-foot undis undisturbed buffer, that's what we've asked for. We're asking that this council recognize this, recognize the infirmities of this particular plan, even as it sits before you, and not grant this building to be shoehorned in here Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment for or against this application? Marcy Fair, 1749 Richdale Drive. Um, I have a statement that I would like to read for Marilyn Swinney, who is out of town. She resides at 1832 Glenmore Lane. She says, to Mayor and Council, 
RZ-1402 has been drawn out much too long. As far as I can tell, the applicant did not do a good job on his due diligence, and now he is asking Grace Baptist Church to make good on his purchase. Besides the variance, this applicant wants to build a building that is too big for this piece of property, but can't tell you what it will be. This is the third time RZ-1402 is being presented. Grace Baptist has given enough. Mayor and Council, do your job and stop postponing it. Deny it. Myself, Marcy Fair, 1749 Richdale Drive. How can you look at a drawing that was presented at 4 o'clock today? They haven't told us what kind of building they're going to build. Okay, they have reduced the size of it, but only to 4,250 square feet. And then they're saying they might reduce it more. What a what kind of materials is this going to be built out of? What kind of design is it going to have? Where are the pictures of the building elevations? I think you should deny it. Thank you, Ms. Ferris. Anyone else that would like to speak for or against this application? My name is Ronald Walker. I live at 3190 Hamlet Creek Court, Conyers, Georgia. My wife's grandfather built this church in 1953, and Grace Baptist Church has tried to be a good citizen. Grace Baptist Church has always trusted the city of Snellville. And right now, tonight, if you take a look at the people in red, a lot of the city of, a lot of, the city of Snellville stands before you. Now, they've met with you time and time again, each of these council members, each of these council meetings to ask you to honor a variance that you've honored time and time again to different community members in Snellville, the 60-foot barrier. The gentleman who bought the property, when he bought the property, he knew that the 60-foot barrier, that variance was in place. And he expects you to just simply throw it out in disregard and do what he wants. He's never once met. He's never once met here. He's never come to the church. He's never met with you know as far as the people there. Uh, nobody's seen him. He's a stranger, and yet this church has stood before you week after week after week with your meetings, asking you to honor the 60-foot barrier that the covenant that the covenant states exist. Now the. Uh, Basically, what he wants you to do, because he, which we'll, we'll talk about the 60 foot, he wants you to take 40 foot, which is approximately 8,000 square foot, away from the church as far as the variance is there, so that he can build a 4,000 square foot building. And if you take a look at what he's got with the footprint and stuff like that, it's, it's questionable whether he can do that. The, or the gentleman who's representing the church mentioned that there's other variances that are in place that have not been addressed, that have not, you know. And I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm upset that this is even taking place. Basically, you have a group of people with the church that are asking you to honor the word that was given to them a long time ago. They've been in place. They've been a good citizen since 1953. I don't know how long the variance has been in place, but it's been there for a while. And I'm sure that you've granted that 60-foot variance to plenty of properties at different times or that you've honored it. And we're just asking you uh, as citizens of Snellville and as Snellville itself to honor that variance and leave it in place. I thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Megan King, I live at 6439 James B. Rivers Drive in Stone Mountain, Georgia. I grew up in Snellville, and um, I have lots of uh, family friends uh, who have a vested interest in this church. With all these 60s and 30s going on as well, uh, I think maybe some 60-year-olds have been over, so I'm bringing a 30-year-old up in front of you. So uh, the church had a 60-foot buffer undisturbed. The applicant did not plan for that. The church agreed to allow for a 30-foot buffer. At that point, the applicant should have planned for the 30-foot buffer. They didn't. I do not understand, just like it was brought up before, why poor planning continues to be the church's problem. 
put a stop to this right now. You are not giving due credit to the 30 feet that the church has already given up. It does not matter how great a landscaped buffer this is going to be. The other lot is too close. We shouldn't be arguing over what kind of bushes are going to be installed or a difference of five feet. The church already gave up 30. It should be stopped there. This does not have to be a church. This could be your home. It's really easy to spend someone else's money, and it's really easy to make decision, decisions that affect someone else's money or someone else's land. I bet you would look at it a lot differently if this were your house next to this other land that we're going on. And I hope that you consider that when you make a decision that affects this church, which is some of these people's second home. Having lived and worked in D.C. politics for over seven years, I think it's pretty safe to assume that some or all of your minds have been made up already before I even got up here. But I implore you to consider the following before you tie your vote to something that cannot be changed. One, I don't know about you, but I personally have seen this in nearly every single classroom and every single grade growing up in Snellville. Poor planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. My teachers used that on me a ton. Growing up, nearly every classroom had it. I then became a teacher later on, and I can personally attest to the importance that setting a precedence does, not only for that child that it affects, but every other child that it affects, as well as the respect that it lends your classroom and you as the leader. At the beginning, our prayer requested that the Lord enable our integrity. Integrity is keeping your word. The 30-foot buffer sounds like it's back on, but it's a landscaped issue, and it really should have been 60 in the first place. I pray that you will keep your word and let your vote honor that. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Mr. Abernathy, would you like to respond? You don't have to. I appreciate the time. I, I think we have thought through this and beat it to death. As I said at the last meeting, I think we want to do what's best for the city. I think we've made a good faith effort. Um, you know, I think there's uh, plenty of room for the church and for us to exist next door to the church. Um, I think in the past, when this property was originally zoned, um, there wasn't a whole lot of growth out on Scenic Highway. It's a different time now than when it got zoned in the past. But I will say this, in looking back at the notes, when Doug Stack was here and he was the um, uh, city manager and or city planner, and looking over this, there was a small building that went right in right here. There was an upstream detention pond that was shown that plan that went through the public hearing at that meeting. The tree, the slope was graded right to the property line and the pine trees were planted on that slope. It was clear at that time that it wasn't a buffer then. Um, and also when buffers were established, when buffers were established, uh, it was 40 feet and it got changed to 60 feet in a zoning change. And no one here can tell me that a buffer was set up for anything other than for the residential use. That's what buffers are for, to protect the residential property owner from the great development that would happen. So it was there for the neighborhood from what's going on up and down Scenic Highway. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abernathy. Um, is there a motion by council? Yes, Ms. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for Consideration and action on application by Tron Nagin to amend the official zoning map of the city of Snellville from OP office professional to district to BG general business district and request that for variances a five, well, in this case, 4,200 and no larger than 4,250 square foot retail center on 0 0.644 plus or minus acres site located at the 1900 block of scenic highway north to Snellville, Georgia, tax parcel number. Five zero four zero a zero zero three. You never actually said whether you wanted to make a motion to approve or what your motion was. Just that you wanted to make a motion. Okay, motion to approve. 
And so, point of clarification, you're making a motion to approve the rezoning um, with the conditions as set forth by the planning department, or? That's what I was doing. Motion to approve this application along with the variances that our city planning department has put in place. Can we make sure that we just tie the site to this submitted site plan for this evening? Just okay. so that the conditions are right. Okay, in addition, the submitted site plan that was given to us this afternoon that indicates the smaller size building and the enhanced landscape strip and undisturbed buffer also included. Does that have a document number on it or something? Mr. Thompson, do you have the variances, a hard copy of it we could see, please, sir? Hang on, we're getting there. I'm a novice iPad user. you're looking at, which contains seven or six variances. That's what we're getting to. I just couldn't read the top line. It was eight, eight conditions, and those would be modified by the site plan. There, there right. are certain parts of those that, that are extended by the site plan. They will fit perfectly into the, to the resolution as prepared. So, Councilman Howard, point of clarification, your motion is to approve rezoning 14-02 and all the variances that were requested with the exception of number, which one is highlighted? Well, it's not, it's just the numbers have to change. We just have to look in and right, plug in those with numbers. With the exception of number, is that two right. or B? Yeah, and that the, um, the uh, fee would be consistent with the site plan that was submitted on August, we'll say 11th, 2014. And, uh, and also to adopt all of the conditions as set forth by the Snellville Planning Department? That would be, and I can certainly put that in the record as far as variances and conditions. I think the B part would be, would be correct. It would be modified by the site plan, but there are other modifications to the conditions and variances that would be contained in the site plan. So it would be. Dependent on the site plan changes what's written here. It does. Right. They do. And so if it's, it's the, if, the if, that, if this is inconsistent with that, it needs to be consistent with that. Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll try this one more time. Is your okay. motion then to approve rezoning 14-02 with approval of the six variants requested by the applicant unless the variances are in conflict with the site plan submitted on August 11, 2014. In case of such conflict, the site plan would trump any variance request. Your motion also includes approval of the special conditions set forth by the Snellville Planning Department. Yeah, there are eight conditions in the plan that would also go along with that. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Councilman Emanuel. Further discussion of the council? I guess I'm a little confused. At the last meeting we discussed this, it seemed that the 30-foot distance from the property line to the building was the only thing that uh, was being requested. We have, by virtue of the fact that the building was shrunk, we have that 30-foot distance now. Uh, I think it's consistent with, with what was requested previously. Additional comment by council? I um, will not support this motion tonight. Um, I have several issues with this development. Uh, first of all, the fact that they're asking for six variances is, is a red flag in, in my mind. Um, I also have an issue with the fact that it's my understanding that the owner is new to the 
development business, has never done this before, and doesn't know what's exactly going to go there. Um, we don't have set a set building as it was proved to us tonight. Um, and so we don't know how this is going to affect traffic concerns on 124. This is already a congested area. You know, when I was on council, I heard developers all of the time say, uh, <laughs> those landscape ordinances, those buffer requirements on 124, they're just a nightmare, and they always wanted us to change them. And um, at the time, we had Jessica Roth as our planning director, and, and she was an arborist, and she was very big in preserving green space and landscaping buffers, and, and, and people, didn't, people didn't understand that back then. Um, but now I hear people say, wow, 124 has survived. People gave it a 20-year lifespan, and it survived after that 20-year lifespan. And people say that 78, they wish 78 would be like 124 with the green space and the trees and the buffers. And so in hindsight, those people that complained about that landscaping and those buffers back in the day now appreciate those things today. And I think as a governing body, we need to enforce those, our ordinances here in the city of Snellville. Um, we need to have... We, I think at the last meeting, it may have been the meeting beforehand, the applicant said something to the fact that the church shouldn't dictate what the buffer is. The church isn't dictating what the buffer is. Our zoning ordinances here in the city of Snellville is dictating what the buffer is. Um, and there is a difference. This is, the church is entitled to a 60-foot undisturbed buffer. They compromise and were willing to give a 30-foot undisturbed buffer. Now, I applaud what the applicant has done today, but it's only a 10-foot undisturbed buffer. The other 15 feet is landscaping. It's not an undisturbed buffer. So we're still not even close to what the church has asked for. The compromise that the church on its own accord came up here and said, you know what, we're willing to give on this. And I find it insulting that someone made the comment at one of the meetings, well, this will abut a cemetery. And so there's even more of a buffer because you don't, it doesn't matter if you build up next to the cemetery. Well, just because someone's deceased doesn't mean we don't have to respect them and we don't have to respect that property. <laughs> So I will not support this today because I believe we need to stand by our buffers. I believe that this will be a traffic concern uh, if we if we uh, approve a building of this size without knowing what's going to go in there. Um, and uh, that concludes my comments. I'll call this for a vote. All those in favor of the motion as stated signify by raising your right hand. That's four in favor. All those opposed. That's one opposed. The motion stands approved. Thank you. That now brings us to our...